continuing to read The Secret of the Golden Flower. It's a just if you are just tuning in, this is the fourth installment and we're going to read the fourth chapter. If you're just tuning in, uh, <clears throat> I've been reading a translation online and uh, the original translation um, that brought this to the West was by a guy named R Richard Wilhelm and he was German and he wrote and he did the translation into German and he was friends with Carl Jung and he did the translation in 1929 and then he died in 1930. In 1931, an English translation was published. In, let's see, in 1991, Thomas Cleary published a trans translation through Harper, Harper One, which is a division of Harper Collins. Um, and I have that in front of me right now. I'm gonna post the link and I'm gonna read um, Thomas Cleary's tra uh, introduction and then we're going to read chapter four and we'll, we'll see what we can glean from his introduction and from chapter four. And, um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've noticed that a lot of people have been, more people have been viewing and liking this, these videos on the secret of the golden flower, which is interesting to me. So, so I'm going to keep going with it. We're going to read all, all of it uh, over the course of the next, you know, a, a couple weeks. Here we go. Introduction. Naturalness is called the way. The way has no name or form. It is just the essence, just the primal spirit. That's the, that's like the, um, the quote at the beginning of this introduction. So let's just talk about that. What is the way? I guess the way is the Tao, right? This is, this is a Taoist slash Buddhist text from the 17th century and it was it was like a channeled writing as I understand it the way has no name or form so this idea of nama rupa nama rupa is, is Sanskrit nama is name rupa is form and the idea is that the world in which we live is a world of nama rupa where there's names and there there are forms there's me and there's you. There's subject and object. Um, but the but reality, or in this case, the Tao or the way, is without Nama Rupa, beyond name and form, nameless and formless. So, and and the way is an interesting translation of Tao. Um, the way is has been used a lot, right? And you could even you could even translate the word Dharma as way. Right, Dharma has many translations, but you can you can translate Dharma. Um, Sanatana Dharma is actually the name for the the true name for Hinduism, and and you can translate Sanatana Dharma. Sanatana is eternal, and Dharma is way, the eternal way, or the you know in this case it would be the eternal Tao. <laughs> Right, which is beyond name and form. So let's let's read on. This is his this is his introduction to the translation. The secret of the golden flower is a lay manual of Buddhist and Taoist methods for clarifying the mind, a distillation of the inner psycho psychoactive elements in ancient spiritual classics. It describes a natural way to mental freedom practiced in China for many centuries. I don't know if psychoactive is the correct word there, <laughs> um, but maybe maybe he used it in a certain way. I don't know, but let's go on. The golden flower symbolizes the quintessence of the paths of Buddhism and Taoism. Gold stands for light, the light of the mind itself. The flower represents the blossoming or opening up of the light of the mind. Thus, the expression is emblematic of the basic awakening of the real self and its hidden potential. In Taoist terms, the first goal of the way is to restore the original God-given spirit and become a self-realized human being. 
In Buddhist terms, a realized human being is someone conscious of the original mind or the real self, as it is in its spontaneous natural state, independent of environmental conditioning. This is this is the the goal, you know, of all of of all true spirituality. And Yogananda back there, um, he started the Self Realization Fellowship, which is essentially the same thing, right? And he uses the term self-realized, self-realized human being. <clears throat> this original spirit is also called the celestial mind or the natural mind, a mode of awareness subtler and more direct than thought or imagination. It is central to the blossom, blossoming of the mind. The secret of the golden flower is devoted to the recovery and refinement of the original spirit. This manual contains a number of helpful meditation techniques but its central method is deeper than a form of meditation using neither idea nor image. It is the process of getting right to the root source of awareness itself. The aim of this exercise is to free the mind from arbitrary and unnecessary limitations imposed on, upon it by habitual, fixa fixa sorry, habitual fixation on its own contents. With this liberation, Taoists say the conscious individual becomes a quote, partner of creation, unquote, rather than a prisoner of creation. No argument there. <laughs> um, so it contains meditation techniques. This manual contains meditation connect techniques, but its central method is deeper than a form of meditation. Um, it's a process of getting right to the root source of awareness itself. All right. The, the experience of the blossoming of the golden flower is likened to light in the sky, a sky of awareness vaster than images, thoughts and feelings, an unimpeded space containing everything without being filled. Thus it opens up an avenue to an endless source of intuition, creativity, and inspiration. Once this power of mental awakening has been developed, it can be renewed and deepened without limit. So it's all about developing um, this blossoming of the golden flower, this blossoming of our awareness so that we can free ourselves of the Nama Rupa, right? All the names and the forms. And we can, we can be in our original mind, our original natural state of consciousness, state of awareness. The essential practice, the essential practice of the golden flower requires no apparatus, no philosophical or religious dogma, no special paraphernalia or ritual. It is practiced in the course of daily life. It is near at hand, being in the mind itself, yet it involves no imagery or thought. It is remote only in the sense that it is a use of attention generally unfamiliar to the mind habituated to imagination and thinking. Those of you who have been following my videos on A Course in Miracles will, will hear echoes of A Course in Miracles right here. It's, you know, I think this is, all, these are all getting at the same thing. It's, these are all esoteric traditions that are aiming at the, the secret of life, which is, which is hidden in plain sight. It's right, it's right under our nose. <laughs> and we just have to, um, you know, do, do, do some of these practices that will help us to cultivate that awareness or maybe not cultivate, cultivate might not be the right way. It might be let go of the things that are in the way of that awareness. It might be a better, it's, it's a, it's a form of cultivation, but it's, it's a letting go. It's a emptying process. The secret of the golden flower is remarkable for the sharpness of its focus on a very direct method for self-realization accessible to ordinary lay people. When it was written down in a crisis more than 200 years ago, it was a concentrated revival of an ancient teaching. And it has been periodically revived in crises, crises since due to the rapidity with which the method can awaken awareness of hidden resources of the mind in the mind. So, this is a revival of an ancient teaching. It's for everyone. It's for it's for the it's for the average Joe, <laughs> for the for the for the layperson who could use this 
in their daily life, going about their daily business. That's what I took from that. The Secret of the Golden Flower is the first book of its kind to have been translated into a Western language. A German version by Richard Wilhelm was first published in 1929, and an English translation of this German rendition was published shortly thereafter. Both German and English editions included an extensive commentary by the distinguished psychologist Carl Gustav Jung, whose work became a major influence in Western psychology, studies of mythology and religion, and New Age culture in general. Although Jung credited The Secret of the Golden Flower with having clarified his own work on the unconscious, he maintained serious reservations about the practice taught in the book. What Jung did not know was that the text he was reading was in fact a garb garbled translation of a truncated version of a corrupted recension of the original work. That's, a, that's an interesting sentence. Let's read the sentence again. What Jung did not know was that the text he was reading was in fact a garbled translation of a truncated version of a corrupted recension of the original work. So Jung didn't know his friend Richard, Richard Wilhelm was, uh, he didn't have the right text <laughs> and he didn't translate it very well, uh, apparently. Of course, you know, when you, when you, when you retranslate a, a book, you have to, sh you have to sh explain why your translation is better than the, than the other guys, right? <laughs> so that's what he's doing here. Unaware is a critical communication gap occurred in the process of transmission and yet the book made a powerful impression. It became one of the main sources of Western knowledge of Eastern spirituality and also one of the seminal influences in Jungian thought on the psychology of religion. Carl F. Baines, who rendered Wilhelm's German into English, even went so far as to hail it as, quote, the secret of the power of growth latent in the psyche. It's a powerful statement. Psychological and experiential approaches to religion have enriched modern psychological thought and research, which have in turn enriched the understanding and experience of religion. In terms of religion as culture, one of the advantages of a psychological approach is the facility with which emotional boundaries of church and sect can thereby be, be transcended. And I think what he's saying here is that, um, you know, we're really talking about, with all of this, we're talking about the psyche. You know, and you, you could maybe say psycho-spiritual. These are, these are psycho-spiritual teachings. And as such, they fall outside of the purview of religion, right? And institutionalized religion. Because it all has to do with working with your own consciousness, with your own mind, with your own psyche. Uh, and that's what A Course in Miracles is as well. It's, it, it's a, it's a, it's a self self-help manual but it's deeper than that but it's all about it, it's very psychological and it's based in freud in, in freud in freud's work um <clears throat> but it's it's not just freud so anyway this is saying something very similar that this is um you know deals with the psyche in Wilhelm's own introduction to his translation of The Secret of the Golden Flower he notes that that Taoist organizations following this teaching in his time included not only Confucians and Buddhists, but also Jews, Christians, and Muslims, all without requiring them to break away from their own religious congregations. So fundamental is the Golden Flower Awakening that it brings out inner dimensions in all religions. Again, this is what we're talking about, like with yoga, with A Course in Miracles, with other teachings like this, they transcend religious, religious institutions and religious dogma and they get right to the heart of things. And that's why people of any religion can use these things. From the point of view of that central experience, it makes no more difference whether one calls the golden flower awakening a relationship to God or to the way, or whether one calls it the Holy Spirit or the Buddha nature or the real self. The Tao Te Ching says names can be designated, but they are not fixed terms. Exactly. <laughs> Where have you been all my life? No, this is exactly what A Course in Miracles uh, says as well, that the terms are, the, the terms, the words are like the form, right? The content is what you want to, is what you want to focus on. 
don't get caught, don't get lost in the words in the form right don't get fixated on on you know it's got to be you got to use the term dao <laughs> it's the dao it's not the way <laughs> or it's not whatever you know but but it's these terms are interchangeable and and these terms are really just pointing to something that is beyond concepts, beyond words, beyond concepts, beyond nama rupa. The image of the opening up of the golden flower of the light in the mind is used as but one of the many ways of alluding to an effect that is really ineffable, meaning unspeakable. The pragmatic purpose of Taoist and Buddhist teachings is to elicit experience, not to inculcate doctrines. That is why people of other religions or with no religion at all have been able to avail themselves of the psychoactive, <clears throat> there's that word again, psychoactive technologies of Taoism and Buddhism without destroying their own cultural identities. I'm not sure if he knew what that psychoactive also refers to like plants and plant medicine. <laughs> maybe he did, maybe he didn't. This was, this was maybe before the era of of plant medicine. This is definitely before the era of plant medicine. This is 91 that he did this. He published it. Um, considered in terms of its essential aim rather than, than the forms it can take, the golden flower method can be used to transcend the barriers of personal and cultural differences without losing the richness of diversity and distinction. <laughs> Let's go on. The secret of the golden flower is indeed a powerful treasure treatise on awakening the hidden potential of a universal human being. And it is in reality an even better and more useful book than Wilhelm Jung or Baines thought it to be. It's kind of putting them down a little bit there. However immature his rendition may have been, I am deeply indebted to Richard Wilhelm for introducing this extraordinary text to the West for, for it could otherwise have gone unnoticed for decades, even centuries amidst the hundreds upon hundreds of Taoist and Buddhist treatises awaiting translation. I think that's what you call a backhanded compliment. I don't know if that's the right term for what he just did there. He said, you know, Wilhelm's translation was horrible, but thank you for translating it because otherwise I would never have known about this. He's standing upon the, the shoulders of a giant, I'm sure. Um, anyway. I'm not sure I, I completely like, I like what he's saying for the most part, but I think he, he might, that might've been a little bit too much there. But anyway, it can therefore be said that it's because of Wilhelm's efforts that this new English version of The Secret of the Golden Flower has come into being. It is to further, in, it is to further inquiries into ways of approaching universal psychology and mental wholeness in general, and to further inquiries into development of the research researches initiated by Wilhelm and Jung in their presentation of this book in particular that I have undertaken to follow up on their work with the new and complete rendition of The Secret of the Golden Flower. Because the still, the still current Wilhelm, Wilhelm Jung Bain's edition of this manual contains dangerous and misleading contaminations, a primary consideration of the new translation was to make the contents of The Secret of the Golden Flower explicitly accessible to both lay and specialist audience. This is partly a matter of translation and partly a matter of presentation. The text itself is somewhat like a series of explanations of practical meanings in esoteric terminology for the use of lay people. To this have been added selections translated from a canonical Chinese Taoist commentary that further refines the principles into pragmatic observations divested of the outward forms of religious and alchemical symbolism. The translation notes explain the expressions, ideas, and practices to which the text refers. The afterword joins the beginning and the end from the background of the translations to the psychological implications of the praxis. That was a mouthful. Um, so <clears throat> let's just say I can understand him being a little harsh on on Wilhelm Jung and Baines. Wilhelm did the German, Jung wrote the preface for the German and, and Baines did the English translation. This is in a, a two year period, 1929 to 1931. Um, I could see him, I could see why he's being down on them. 
because um, you know he he wants obviously he wants his translation to sell, <laughs> but he also wants to to publish. He wants to correct the mistakes that they made. Um, it's just a question of did they really make mistakes? You know, I think that you always have to ask that question. You can't just assume that whatever someone is saying is true and accurate, right? You have to question, you know, is this guy really being accurate in what he's saying? And, and he doesn't, he didn't back up what he said with anything <laughs> just there. Um, I'm wondering if I should stop the video now and then just continue because that was already 20 minutes instead of going into a whole new section and do chapter four, maybe we can do chapter four tomorrow and leave it, leave it at that for now. Um, I think it was good that we, cause we are going to, I am going to use the clear trans clearly translation, but in between today and tomorrow, I'm going to do a little research into this translation and see what people have said about this translation. Uh, I'm going to look on Amazon first. <laughs> so anyway, I hope that was helpful. And, um, I think the, the, the point is, is that this is like a classic text by this point, uh, definitely in the West. And, and it's one that is well worth our consideration and our time. And I thank you for tuning in. And um, it's interesting to see that, I, that, you know, the number of people that have tuned in in the last few days. Um, so I guess we're on to something here. So we're going to continue with chapter four tomorrow. Thank you for tuning in again. And I'll see you soon. Or if you're new, I appreciate you you showing up and and feel free to leave a comment or or anything else. Um, I've I've enjoyed reading everyone's comments as well. Thank you.